Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and there is some wild stuff going on in crypto. This is the first thing that's wild. Crypto conglomerate DCG being investigated by the DOJ. Now I think this has to do with what the Winklevoss brothers or Cameron Winklevoss had, was, uh, had tweeted about, about DCG or whatever. But the point is, is that of all the companies in crypto that I ever thought would be in this kind of a situation, this is the last one. Which brings me to the next uh, thing I wanted to show you. Now, this is Baba Cugs. He's a lightning rod. The crypto police could come out of nowhere on this, but I want to show this because I thought it was interesting. He's got his own 2023 predictions. Look at this. Remember all these years headlines shouting America is behind? Uh, you are about to witness the full force of America. Now, see, this is this that's something I've been saying too over the last few years. Is the whole thing was America's behind, America's behind, America's behind. Well, meanwhile, <clears throat> uh, America's behind China, and that's been kind of the theme. Um, and there's it's a very confusing mix of things going on, probably by design, but. This idea that America's behind, well, actually, no, the XRP ledger works as good or better than anything that I've heard of in, in all of crypto, in, including the digital yuan, okay? So is America really behind? That's what I've always been questioning. Now, he says, uh, he says, you're about to witness the full force of America. This entire industry is controlled by one entity. Not sure what he's talking about there. Entity, that entity under, understands they cannot do everything themselves. That entity allows others to prosper and grow in hopes that the industry itself grows organically towards the, their end goal. From time to time, that entity must give a nudge to fix those who get out of line, but they do not fear anyone or any, anything that enters the industry. They watched, they waited, they moved the pawns meticulously, all the while defeated. This was done by design, not for you, not for others, but for to control the narrative. In my opinion, this is what co is coming next. Everything you know about this industry is going to be shaken upside down. <laughs> DCG would be an example of that. You will lose money. You will see projects go to zero. You will see many uh, in crypto Twitter get very upset. Um, uh, we've seen this happens every time there's a bear market. People in crypto Twitter, they turn on each other. Not me, I let everybody say their thing. Uh, so anyway, you'll see um, uh, many in crypto Twitter get very upset. It was always going to be this way. The board is about to be reset. The nukes are about to be dropped. Those who no longer played by the rules will feel the wrath of its maker for the reaper never forgets his prey. This was always why I have been 100% XRP. I understand the game. I understand the rules. I understand who controls the board. I understand the consequences and risks. I understand the implications of varying from the information I know. I can guarantee one thing and one thing only. Only one is protected. The rest is a gamble. I don't wait. I don't gamble. I wait. I win. Best of luck. Okay. That's interesting. Look, that, that'll probably offend some of you out there, but that's okay. We're just showing the information. Um, it reminds it reminds me of this. This was Kendra Hill, okay? And this is the, the biggest narrative or the biggest uh, probably assumption out there in crypto is that Bitcoin's untouchable. Kendra Hill, who disappeared from social media, said this a long time ago. Allowing additional currencies to exist when the world is only using one world or, or one would be disruptive, so it will not be tolerated and it will be easier to stop than you think. The illusion is that Bitcoin, for example, is untouchable. The reality is that it is a government controlled, it's government controlled through the use of mining pools. Any cryptocurrency aiming to be a decentralized digital currency will not survive. The one that will that we will use has already been chosen. Then I like this from Patrick Riley. I mean, there's a lot of interesting little things going on out here, folks. Fires being stoked. There's a lot of misdirection, it seems, going on too. Um, China didn't sick their dogs on Bitcoin. They've been manipulating that for years. They needed to stop XRP adoption in the U.S. 
because they know it keeps us from going under. This isn't just a court case, it's a war because XRP is the one, <laughs> that's what he says. All right, then we on the other side, we now you've got to, for those of you that don't know, you've got to understand from the beginning of us uncovering ETHgate, and ETHgate is real, it's 1000% real, um, but for those of you that were involved in us uncovering that, the only two people in traditional financial media that we were able to get to jump on board was Eleanor Terrett and Charles Gasparino. Charles Gasparino and Eleanor Terrett, they are fully aware of all the details uh, involved with Bill Hinman and all the whole thing. But Charles Gasparino has, and, and I appreciate them for, for everything they've done, and I would never uh, attack them per se anyway. I mean, they're, they're, they've, they've shown themselves to be pretty reasonable uh, people. Um, but there's a re like a real about face going on with Gasparino here. He says, I've, I've, I see zero criminal conduct on behalf of Bill Hinman, zero. Does that automatically mean the SEC did the right thing suing Ripple? Of course not, but deal with facts. Now, I don't know if this person's blocked me or what, but I can't see that tweet. But then he goes, uh, he goes on here. Again, why is this illegal? Hinman literally asked the ethics office about whether this is kosher. Find a new conspiracy. In other words, He's saying Hinman asked if, if, um, if ethically, if he could meet with his law firm, people from his law firm. Well, the part Charles is not saying here is that when he did ask, they said, no, you can't. That, is, that could be a criminal conflict, and he did it anyway. That's the part he's not addressing. Stefan Huber says here, because he asked if he's allowed to meet Simpson Thatcher, the ethics office told him not not to not violate criminal law by meeting with Simpson Thatcher, and then he completely ignored it, repeatedly joked about the ethics office orders while meeting with Simpson Thatcher. So this is the part Charles is not talking about. Um, and then I asked John Deaton, I wanted to hear, get John Deaton to weigh in. I said, hey, John, I know you're, you're fond of Charles Gasparino and Ele Eleanor Terrett, as I am, but I assume you disagree with Charlie about Hinman, the things he's saying here. Um, and Char John says, I've talked to others who, like Charlie, may not view the Hinman conflicts as being any worse than things they've seen in the past. Um, I disagree. I did a detailed over six a detailed thread over six months ago. I disagree, and I'm still fond. Um, and here's this thread. If you read through this, the William Hinman conflict of interest thread, it's extremely apparent. Um, it's in your face apparent that there were criminal conflicts here. Okay. So if Charles reads through that, he'll find that and then he'll correct himself, but he's, but he's doubling and tripling and quadrupling down instead. Jeremy Hogan weighed in on this, okay? And he says, let me see, an experienced SEC law, lawyer says a crime was committed and John Deaton also, but Mr. Gasparino says there, there was none, hmm. Yeah, gonna have to go with 50 years worth of lawyers on that one. Well. Charles Gasparino, I mean, it's like a, a lot of drama going on today, folks. Um, an experienced SEC lawyer says a crime was committed, which means this guy goes to jail. Someone check Jeremy's law li license and make sure it's not from Trump University. I mean, now, and here's the other thing, folks. Eleanor T Terrett is extremely quiet, and I don't understand why. And all of this is also against the backdrop. We've seen Charles trying to defend Gary Gensler over the last bit too. Now, there was an interesting, uh, and but Eleanor Terrett's not really weighing in much on this, folks. And that's, and, and let me tell you what else they didn't weigh in on, folks. Remember back on Fox Business when Maria Bartiromo, about a month or two ago, they, were, they ran a whole segment about settlement. These people, I was trying to get very specific, but they were not wanting to weigh in on specifics. So something's going on, I don't know what's going on, well, here's one idea um, from Molly Elmore. Why would Charlie bring this up now? What is the Streisand effect? Well, let's learn this morning if you don't know what the Streisand effect says. The Streisand effect is, is, the, way a, a, is the way attempts to hide, remove, or censor information can lead to unintended consequence of increasing awareness of that information. It's named after American singer and actress Barbara Streisand, who, whose attempt to suppress California Coastal Records Project's photograph of her cliff, cliff top residence in Malibu taken to document California coastal erosion. 
inadvertently drew greater attention to the photograph in 2003. So I guess Molly's probably saying here, are they do is Charles doing this to draw more attention to it, or is um is Charles this or is he, maybe he really believes this and in effect he's going to draw more attention to it. So it's a good thing for us. <laughs> so um, either way, um, you know we don't have to attack them or anything. There's no point in that. But but that doesn't mean we can't call out the factual places where where they're wrong. That's kind of where where I land on this whole thing. And then Stefan Huber says, sad, and this is, the, this is the real meat of the thing. Sad, imagine what a journalist could do with all this, okay? Because this is something that even Eleanor Terrett and Charles Gasparino have never done. And they've seen the videos. All it takes is one real investigative journalist. You want a career maker, go find out who the disguised whales are. You got the video. And another one, second one. Go, f go to Homeland Security and say, wait a minute, you guys met with the Force of Touches. We've shown these two videos, Eleanor Terrett, Charles Gasparino. They're fully aware of these two. If you want a story, you want to really get a story, those two videos, they can track back from those email addresses. They can track back on the blockchain. They can find out exactly who the disguised whales were. Individuals and entities, they could do it with the technology that's there right now. They could do it. Um, there's several chain analysis does that kind of stuff. You could go to them and have that done. You could go, there was a specific Homeland Security agent that she's the one that said it, that there's four Satoshis. If, even if you go to her and you, and you say, well, y'all said, you said that Homeland Security met with the four Satoshis. Even if she says, well, which she probably will, which is the whole game these agencies play. Even if she says, well, uh, we can't comment on that. Um, it's still a story. That's a story in itself. Why can't you comment? Um, any investigative journalist worth their salt would go do it. Why aren't they doing that? I don't have a Fox News budget. <laughs> I mean, I think BitBoy's done more investigative journalism than the mainstream media has of, the mainstream financial media has of any of these very specific controversies and potential criminality um where have our investigative journey where's 60 minutes they did a thing on madoff i mean it's like somewhere in the last 10 or 15 years um or maybe we just became aware of it somewhere in the last 10 or 15 years when you start to see criminality they disappear somebody somewhere doesn't want a spotlight on on certain things and that is the tell now so Michael Arrington retweeted this video of, um, this is a video where Gary Gensler is explaining in detail exactly what the use case of XRP is. He knows exactly what it is. And Michael Arrington retweeted it. He says, hey, Brad Garlinghouse, you should hire this guy as an expert witness in your SEC litigation. He seems to get it. Gary Gensler explains everything about what um, XRP would be used for specifically names XRP. I'll just play the second half. Instead of SWIFT, it's not yet up in any. So he knows that there's a use that XRP has a use case, and his his SEC has been arguing for two years that it does not. Okay, um, and so what I what I had uh, tweeted out is regulatory capture, and this is the problem, folks. What's regulatory capture? Regulatory capture is an economic theory that says regulatory agencies may come to be dominated by the industries or interests they are charged with regulating. The result is that an agency charged with acting in the public interest instead acts in ways that benefit incumbent firms in the industry it is supposed to be regulating. In other words, protect the incumbents by going after the startups, whether they're crypto exchanges, or crypto startups. This way, I mean, have you seen have you seen Gary go after JP Morgan for JPM coin? Have you seen him go after Ethereum? Have you seen him go after anybody involved in this whole controversy? Nope, you have not. Wrath of Kahneman had an interesting little write-up here on this article. Nice interview, Ripples Navi and Gupta, who did say they will put a dent in the universe or go away. Um, Ripple working in uh, with NYU I, Abu Dhabi. Dubai, um, I butchered that name one time. One of my friends made fun of me about it. So I may have butchered it again, but sorry. 
On a cluster of startups, a U UAE devs are building on XRPL, notes uh, PayPal and Lulu Money. I think that's what that is. ODL in 40 payout markets representing 90% of 6 trillion daily FX. We're going to finish this up as a, with a little flare reminder. After all, a, after a couple, I think, guess a couple of years of waiting, uh, it was December 2020, right when the lawsuits started by coincidence. Um, the flare snapshot was taken in two days, nine hours, zero minutes, 56 seconds. Uh, let's wait for that to tick down. I want to see what happens right um, here. We may go down, we may go to, uh, I think it's about to flip um, over. But I haven't really looked at this uh, page. The exchanges, these are the ones that are going to do the distribution. I wanted to show you um, the ones I care about are Coinbase is pending. It says not announced. I thought they did announce. I know Uphold said they're going to do it. I know iTrust Capital is doing it. Um, and so we'll see on these other. The, the, the one I'm kind of concerned about is Coinbase because I'm afraid they're going to, if they do drop it, you're not going to be able to do anything with it. They're going to drop it and let it sit there and not let you sell it or buy it or whatever. Um, but we shall see. So the countdown is now. Two days, eight hours, 59 minutes, 57 seconds. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. Two days, eight hours, 59 minutes.